Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering HPE Discover 2017, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for SiliconANGLE's Cube exclusive coverage of three days of wall-to-wall -wall interviews here at HPE Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Vellante, co-host, and our next two guests is Rod Bag, VP of Analytics, Customer Support, Data Center, Infrastructure at HPE, formerly Nimble, now HPE, and Paul Sabin, Senior uh, Network and Infrastructure Manager at Baker Bots LLP. Guys, thanks for joining on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you for it. having us, thanks for having Appreciate us. It. So we talked before we came on camera about all the great stories. Uh, Nimble, obviously now part of the, the, the fold here at HPE Enterprise. Um, your customer stories, let's get right into it. Tell your story about how Nimble puts you out of a job. That's <laughs> my favorite one, go. Okay, so. When I started, or when we bought Nimble Storage, I was the senior storage engineer. So we purchased it, we brought it in-house. It was up within, you know, within an hour, I was already starting to car carve out LUNs. At that point, I'm using the RESTful APIs to carve out the rest of the 200 LUNs that we needed, presenting it to the hosts. And by the end of it, it ran itself. With, between InfoSight and the fact that the product just is so easily automated, I kid you not, true story, at the end of the year when we're doing our self-evaluations, my evaluation said, and congratulations, you don't need me anymore. My position is obsolete. And the management came back and said, Paul, you're absolutely right. We agree that we don't need this position anymore, so we're going to promote you to the senior network and infrastructure team. <laughs> so, so I manage that now. So you got promoted, but this is a trend in automation. This is the DevOps, this is the programmable infrastructure world we're moving into exactly. with hybrid. Yeah. This, Rob, this is big deal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and you know, InfoSight, as we see it, plays a big role in that, really, you know, the product is simple and, and being able to automate that, but InfoSight giving our customers sort of visibility at a very deep level into how the systems are performing and what we do on the back end to drive availability really takes a lot of pain off of our customers, and I'm not sure that we put everybody out of, out of work, but we, uh, we certainly make uh, life easier so that they can focus on the business aspect. Yeah, I mean, you automate those tasks the way that yeah. really should be automated, and that's yep. a cool thing. Take a minute, I'd like you to take a minute just to explain uh, what the product is and what you guys are doing, just so we can get that out there as context and then jump into some more stories. Yeah, so from an InfoSight perspective? Yeah, yeah so, so Info, InfoSight is our predictive um, uh, cloud analytics platform that uses machine learning to predict and prevent uh, problems from occurring to our customers, um, so we're not disrupting their business. And so we collect uh, somewhere in the order of about a, you know, maybe 25 million pieces of information from every array and the virtual environment uh, every day from every single array. All of that gets into a big analytics database where we have a team of data scientists working with our support engineers and our product engineers to build wellness rules. We have about 800 health checks yeah. that are really looking out uh, at every part of the infrastructure for our customers and really avoiding issues for them. So you take the data across your entire install base. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure you take care of the data so it's not all... Oh yeah, it's all secured. <laughs> secure <Yeah>. and <laughs> anonymized. And then use that as predictive to prescribe or both, or how are you... Yeah, aiming? both. So our, our real goal there is that if we know of an issue uh, that either we've found in our labs or maybe uh, one customer has experienced it, uh, really we're doing everything we possibly can to analyze that issue across the entire install base. So we're learning from peers yep. and applying those learnings across the install base and preventing other customers from hitting And the system is autodidactic in this sense. It just le it, it learns and then applies, is that Yeah, right? so we, we do, we do um, you know, machine learning, uh, semi-supervised semi in a lot of cases. So where we've seen an issue and we can train the models and then it will look out for those sort of issues across the entire install. I like the notion of wellness. Yep. Um, it brings you know something some that people can relate to. We also heard terms like uh, self-driving storage, you know, yep. playoff testers. Yeah. But this is again the trend that really is needed. Share other stories that you have because this is really where IT is going as it moves to a different kind of uh, application yep. and consumption model for you guys. Right. So, well, kind of touching about about what he was talking about. When you're as a storage guy. What's the number one thing that us storage guys have to do is we have to prove that it's not the storage that's the problem. So usually what happened was in the old world, you know, I would produce some statistics of, okay, and here's the IOPS that we were producing, here's the latency during this time. So based on this, I, it wasn't me, I don't know who it was, I'm just going to tell you it's not me. In the new world. With that was the finger pointing world. Yes, the other it was. Yeah. But in, with InfoSight, it's like, hey, I can tell you, but it, you're also welcome to go here as well. 
but let me show you VM Insight, where it's going to show you not only what was happening at the storage, but let me take you all the way down to the host and then the VM, and we're going to find this problem. And yeah, it turns out sometimes it's going to be the VM that's all of a sudden taking whatever, for whatever reason, adding an, a huge amount of latency. And that is something that there's no more finger pointing in it anymore. Yeah. So all of a sudden we're all on the same team. It's like this kumbaya thing. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, good for the, it's good for the cohesiveness of the team, but also it's time savers too. When you reduce the steps to, to do things, you get your weekends back, as you guys say, <laughs> um, and, and before you came on camera. Tell, tell the story about um, how you had to do all this work on the provisioning or the, on, the, on the replication side. Sure. Back recovery so side. When, yeah. When we, when we deployed the arrays, we decided uh, it was a business decision to go ahead and put the production arrays into our production data center, and then we would do the DR at a later time. So I've got all of my uh, data live on production, and they say, okay, now we're, we're adding our nibble storage at our DR site. Um, Paul, how much replication uh, bandwidth do we need? And so, same story. In the old world, you go and you pull your statistics from your replication technology, you put it into Excel spreadsheet, you figure out, okay, here's my peaks, and if I want to just say, if we fall behind just a little bit, this is what we can do. And so usually what happens is I say, guys, in my best guess, based on what I can see from my limited scope, because it, you know, my eyes are bleeding at this point. From the um, spreadsheet, you're in a spreadsheet yeah. yes, right now. Yes, exactly. You're in spreadsheet hell. I'm in spreadsheet <laughs> hell. And so you know, what I do is after about a weekend's worth of work, I put in this you know, recommendation. And I usually fluff it because you know, I could be wrong in my statistics. And so this is what I end up creating. Yeah, you don't want to be under, you want to be over. Exactly, right, yeah. you're, you're always, I'm always trying to do that. So the firm, I'm, you know, hopefully this isn't, uh, nobody's watching at the office, but sometimes they may be overpaying for something because you know, I just don't want to make that chance in the new world. This is actually the coolest thing ever. So I'm on InfoSight and I go to this little drop down. it's like the, the tool planner. Okay, what's that? And it's like, we're actually going to tell you what you need for bandwidth based on your actual real data. So then I'm pulling like, okay, based on this time, what is, what is the replication if I want to do it every hour? And what if I want to do it every two hours? So then I just take that and I turned it into this report that I got to present to the executive team. And they're like, oh my goodness, you have certainly stepped up. How many weekends did you use on this one? And you know, I'm not going to tell them. It took me five minutes in InfoSight to be able to create this <laughs> Now they report. know. <laughs> yeah, but now they know. Cats out, well, you already got promoted, so. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So Rod, can you talk about the decision to acquire Nimble, I mean, yep. what was the genesis? Obviously, there's a portfolio component, yeah. tuck-ins, yes. fill in some gaps, but there's this other sort of IP piece. Maybe take us back. Yeah, so certainly there was the, the portfolio, portfolio fit with the, with the storage platform, so that was, that was obviously a big part of it. I think the other obviously big part was, was InfoSight. So the idea that uh, what we're doing there with our customers and improving the, the availability of the systems and the operational performance of the, of the system and keeping a close eye on that to make sure it's optimized. So the, all of that value prop around InfoSight was a big uh, part of the decision, I think. Um, we are working on extending InfoSight into the, the HPE product line, um, starting with, with 3 part. So we are working already with, with that engineering team to be able to bring some of these features uh, out as quickly as we can uh, into the three-part world uh, so, as well. So what is that, I mean, from an engineering standpoint, is that sort of the requirement there is to point InfoSight at the, the three-part data? Yeah, exactly. So three-part does collect a lot of data yeah, already. Yeah, sure do. So yeah. really, we're, we're just pulling that data into our pipelines and so on and within InfoSight and taking advantage of some of the, the machine learning and, and algorithms and so on that we already do. Um, you know, things like DM Vision would, would be possible and so on uh, in that environment as well. It's interesting. Three par customer. It, back in maybe 10 years ago, 3PAR was sort of the gold standard yep. of what we used to call the hero report. That's you know? right, yep, yeah. The, and people love that. Uh, thin so, provisioning, so what impact it was, yep. you know, yep. how much you saved, et cetera. And then, but that predated the whole big data analytics yeah, exactly. years, right? Yeah. And so when, when Nimble, started, they could have started with that premise right around that time. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was the premise, was to really apply data science to all of that data that was coming in and really transform the support experience for Nimble. And I think that's the other big element for, for HP as well. I mean, there's, there's lots that we do in our support organization that, uh, you know, it, to, to be honest, is quite enviable by by a lot of storage and, and high-tech vendors. Well, I mean, you guys took a different approach. I think what's really notable for me, which I'm impressed with, is everyone talks about this, but very few put it into action, is making the user experience center yeah. Yeah, of, the, exactly. of the value. I mean, all the things you're talking about, the benefits, is really centered around your experience, right? Yeah. right. Saving you time, uh, making your life easier, shifting the automation uh, that could be automated with the right things, 
and moving into higher value things. So, so Paul, what's your thoughts on this as it goes forward, this world's evolving? We're hearing the messages here, simplifying um, hybrid IT, uh, you got cloud right on the doorstep, multiple clouds are going to be the end game on all this, so all said and done, and a whole new infrastructure is going to be out there. What's your view of how that user experience for the practitioners will evolve? What's your vision? How do you even see it playing out? Putting you out of a job again? <laughs> <laughs> no, true story. So uh, the firm decided that they were going to uh, bring in some people to help us look into what cloud we should, or how, how we should utilize the cloud, because uh, even, even from us, we're, we're trying to keep ourselves agile as a law firm, because if we can provide our services in a better, more meaningful, and faster way, that gives us a competitive edge. So we brought in this team, and they went over all of our IOPS, and at the time it was under the different storage systems, so it took like, you know, at least 20, 30 hours of my time to get all of these numbers that they wanted. And then they created this report for us, which I thought was really meaningful and, and valuable. Um, the, the last line was, uh, you should do cloud where cloud makes sense. So that was it. That's that whole. Solid advice, you know, <laughs> money well spent. And that's what Meg's basically but. saying in the keynote, the right mix of cloud versus on-prem. Certainly law firms have proprietary information and <laughs> they want it secure. I guess my question really is fundamentally is a provocative one. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. It's a serious question, you can laugh at it a little bit, but with AI bots coming, you can almost yeah. see these kinds of legal tasks yeah. being automated away. So you might be, next promotion is <laughs> taking over the firm. No, but <laughs> you know, that's where big data can come in. So how are you guys looking at that as a firm? Because I'm sure the lawyers are saying, hey, you know what? I can shift my value to higher yield activities exactly. where that makes sense. You guys talk about that at all? We do, and I actually use the example of NASA. I really love NASA, I'm a huge fan. And NASA decided, they declared, we're going to go to Mars. We're going to do this. How are we going to do this? We have to let go of our operational stuff. We have to let go, I mean, we can launch the shuttle all day long, we're comfortable with that. We can, uh, you know, we can go into the space station, we're comfortable with that. But now we've got we've to go new. And the way we have to do that is we have to drop this stuff. Let's let other people do this. Let's let the, you know, the InfoSight team start handling a lot of that work for me. And now I'm asking my team, guys, I want you to start dreaming. Get out of the operational work, start dreaming out loud. Let's figure out ways we can deliver value to our attorneys exactly. to free them. And yeah. let's let them just, again, take that same freedom. And you know, yeah. with the business intelligence and the machine learning, you're right that their, uh, their document uh, management, which is their you know, bread and butter, is their, their document production. Even that's getting scrutinized or tra transformed through uh, this machine learning. And uh, so uh, you could take this as a, as a way of saying, no, the, <laughs> there goes my job. Or you can say, no, now I've got the opportunity to do something even better and cooler and you yeah. know, really bring the value. And, and stretching, that's, that's that whole stretch goal, having that moonshot, in this case, Mars example. Mars, right. It's the stretch and leverage, right? That's yes. the concept. Um, how do you apply that to storage? Because now HP's got the composability, they got synergy, yeah, yep. they have all kinds of now glue layers kind of developing. We heard Antonio Neri uh, in the press and analyst Q&A with Meg Whitman talk about, you know, most of their acquisitions have been in software, except for like maybe one, one or two uh, yeah. over the past uh, you know, couple of years, have been software. Yeah. So hardware, software kind of blending? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. In the, from the storage perspective, certainly, I think that's happening. Uh, I think from the InfoSight perspective, where we see that going, is again, what today when we, and we put a lot of effort into our recommendation models, and that's, that's an area that's very much in the deep data sciences uh, realm. So when, when we come up with those recommendations, mm -hmm. you know, we do things where we can prevent people from hitting issues, and, and that just sort of happens automatically, but some of these things are, something needs changing in their environment. So maybe, um, you know, may, maybe there's a QoS policy, policy that should be applied on the array to optimize performance because of some peak workload during Christmas, something of that nature. So that's still a last mile problem for us yeah. because you've got a human at the other end that's got to go in there and, and fix it and hopefully do it right and not ignore it and everything else. I can see the headline now, storage wellness. Everything yeah, comes exactly. into HPE. But this is really interesting. I mean, so you have the concept of self-healing, right? That, I mean, so that's where we want to go with that. I mean, that, that really is the, the, the thing we're working towards in the vision is, is how do you go and do that, change those QoS policies yeah. uh, for the customer, 
uh, where we could inject, uh, let's say, a, a um, change control within their change management system. Yeah. They can go hit a button, which we orchestrate that change for them. It's all documented and well yeah. controlled. It's uh, not just storing the data, it's being data driven for the data being stored. In the exactly. Self <laughs> yeah, story. exactly. Mm -hmm. Rod Paul, thanks so much for sharing the stories and, and congratulations on the, on the promotion. Thank you. And congratulations on, on uh, InfoSight. You guys got, got great uh, Buy an Nimble, get promoted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Come in the queue, get right? promoted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Birds of a fire. All right, appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, thanks for having us. More live coverage here from the Cube here at HP Discover 2017. After the short break, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. <laughs>